practice? I think really to answer that, we need to understand the journey travel to get to this point. This has actually been a long time in the making. We actually have quite a rigorous process of the inclusion. It's, we call it the quality of market criteria. And this is something we work with very major clients on the buy side, some of the major institutions globally. So a lot of this is demand driven by them. And our quality of market is all about the, the status of settlement, tradability, custodianship, regulation. So it's a very rules driven process and actually three or four years ago very heavy duty negotiations have been placed to get these things in place. So the point is it's very objective, it's very systematic and transparent. So I think uh, whilst we might get a letter being written I think we can look people in the eye and say this is not being driven by any external political so pressure, it's a process none driven. from China either, because that was the other issue, of course, people have said MSCI came under enormous pressure if they wanted to expand their business yep. into China to do this. You haven't had no, that kind we, of No, ours has been one of working with them very closely and saying in terms of the quality market criteria, what is it you need to do, and they've worked to, to, to make that op open up the market, but we must understand this has actually been primarily driven with us by, by the major clients. This is a process, Philip, isn't yeah. it? And you, you start at A and you get to a certain level with the Chinese and say yeah we think we want to include you now but, but what do they still need to work on what the still what are the worries that you put forward that you still think actually we need to make steps forward on I think if you actually look at this phasing of this I mean the eight just to put the A shares in context this is 51% of the total free float of Chinese equities that have so far been untapped hence the client demand so our real concern is and it has been about doing this in a very systematic phased way uh, you know we're doing it in several phases this is the first phase in itself has got three tranches so my question is so well, it's about liquidity yeah. it's about how do the big passive funds execute the exposure we talk about 10 billion net inflows off of this first phase that's coming it today mm -hmm. uh, the second phase comes in september and the third one in uh, March of next year, and just to put some total market cap numbers on, that's going to add 260 billion and in to terms of, FTSE emerging market indices. In terms of China's relative weighting now to mm. the other emerging markets uh, within the FTSE emerging market yeah. index, the China A shares will represent about five and a half percent. So right. how does that compare to the other major countries in that index, and how is this going to affect well, investment the, and demand? And the reality is, if you look at uh, with the inclusion of the A, and you take us through to where March of next year, China's going to account for about 36, 37 percent of emerging market benchmark so it's too big to ignore it's going to dominate emerging markets just as the US dominates developed markets so this A share is, is a big story because this is a long-term thematic trend and this is just the first phase coming if you move it to its full entirety China will become ever bigger part of emerging markets hi I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching you can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.